Hello, welcome in the 8th lecture of the course two phase flow and heat transfer. In this course, in we will be understanding annular flow models. Annular flow model is a typical flow pattern in gas liquid two phase flow, where we will be finding out liquid film is adhered with the pipe and in the core of the tube, we will be finding out gaseous phase. So, in this lecture, we will be stressing about the calculation of film velocity in both laminar and turbulent regime. We will be evaluating film flow rate in the two phase flow configuration, annular two phase flow configuration. We will be assessing non dimensional film thickness based on film Reynolds number as well as we will be defining two phase multiplier for gas or liquid portion only as a function of void fraction. So, first let us see that how annular flow configuration can be shown here in pictorial view. Here I have shown you a pipe uh, inside which annular flow is occurring. You see inside this we are having first a film adhered with the wall and inside the core we are having gaseous phase. Okay. Now, here you see in the film we can consider a small element like this, where this small element will be getting shear stress tau from the adjacent uh, liquid layers and in the interface it will be getting the shear stress tau i in the upward direction. Now, near the wall this shear stress tau is being converted to tau w which is nothing but the wall shear stress. Okay. And uh, if we think about this fluid element, the fluid element is having pressure from the bottom as p and from the top it is p plus dp. Okay. This element length we have considered over here delta z. Now, if we try to have a force balance, then we will be finding out that uh, we are having over here uh, the shear stress at the interface, the shear stress at the outer layer of this of this fluid element as well as we are having some weight of the fluid element acting in the downward direction. Apart from that, we will be having also the pressure forces P plus dP and P over here. Okay. So, if you write down the force balance equation over here, you can see the first term whatever I have written this is nothing but. 2 pi r into delta z that is the area whatever uh, through which this tau or shear stress from the other liquid layer is being acted. Okay. So, this is in the downward direction because tau is in the downward direction. Okay. In a similar fashion here we have written the shear stress what it is getting the liquid layer is getting from the gaseous interface which is in the upward direction. So, that is why here we are having a plus sign the area will be once again 2 pi r into delta z and the magnitude of shear st interficial shear stress is nothing but tau y. So, these two are coming from the shear stresses and this is actually your interficial shear stress. Now, as I have told that we are having over here some sort of weight of the fluid element. So, the weight can be found out by volume into density. So, for the volume pi into r square minus r i square into delta z. So, this is the volume multiplied by density of the liquid rho f and the g which is acting in the downward direction. So, as a result we are having a minus sign. right? And from the pressure force, you see here we have pressure P from the downward side and from the upward side P plus delta P. So, this will be P minus of P plus dP. Now, this dP if we consider for unit length delta Z, so we can write down P minus P minus dP by dZ, dz into delta Z. So, this delta Z delta Z cancels out, but for uh, facilitating this uh, calculation of dP dz I have written like this. This pressure is acting on the area pi into r square minus r i square, which is the uh, bottom area or you can say the top area for the liquid film. So, from here if you simplify this one and try to calculate the value of the tau, then you will be getting the tau as tau equals to tau y into r i by r minus of half into rho f plus g plus d p into d z, d p by d z comes from here, d p by d z comes from here multiplied by r square minus r i square by r. A simple uh, calculation from this equation, if you try to figure out what is the value of this tau, you will be getting this equation after cancellations. Now, we are having different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, film flows. So, for film flow that I have showed this is the equation. We in case of laminar film flow, we can write down tau equals to mu f into d u f by d y. Okay. So, this uh, further can be calculated by some transformation, the transformations are like this. Okay. So, let us try to see what happens in case of turbulent film flow. 
So, in case of turbulent film flow we know that there are several layers we have to consider first one is laminar sub layer then we will be having buffer layer and we can also have turbulent layer. So, I have given here uh, the example of two layers only laminar sub layer and the extreme one turbulent layer. So, we know from fluid mechanics that in the laminar sub layer u f plus is equals to y plus where u f is nothing but u f plus is nothing but u f by u tau and u tau can be written as shear stress by density of the fluid to the power half and y plus is the characteristic length you can write down that one as y into u tau by rho f into mu rho f divided by mu f right. So, what you can do just in a similar fashion if you write down that what is u f plus equals to y plus over here using this these equations inside this then you will be finding out u f can be written in the form of tau ok and that comes as u f equals to d minus 2 r by 2 mu f into tau ok. Already we have expressed what is tau over here for the film flow ok. So, we can replace the tau over here and write down u f for the turbulent laminar sub layer zone d minus 2 r by 2 mu f into tau i r i by r minus of half into rho f into g plus of dp dz multiplied by r square minus r i square by r ok. Similar thing can be also done in case of turbulent layer for turbulent layer we know u f plus is equals to 5.5 plus 2.5 into ln of y plus this is typically coming from fluid mechanics. So, what we can do in a similar fashion as we have done in laminar turbulent uh, laminar sub layer we can also perform uh, this one uh, for uh, turbulent layer we, we can find out that u f can be written as 5.5 tau by rho f to the power half plus 2.5 ln of tau by rho f to the power half into ln of y tau by mu f. So, once again what we can do tau we can replace from the previous equation what we have found out for the film flow and finally obtain the film velocity in this fashion ok. So, for both the regimes laminar and turbulent we have shown how film velocity can be obtained this is very very important for uh, annular flow regime ok. Next as we have found out the flow velocity laminar film flow velocity it will be very critical to find out what is the film flow rate. So, what we have done over here W f f which is the film flow rate we have found out by integrating 0 to delta pi capital D small d y into u f into rho f. So, this is basically pi d d y u f rho f. So, uh, the limit for y is from 0 to delta ok. So, you can write down this one for laminar do domain that this u f will be will be written as y tau by mu f ok. And if you do this derivation of the integration from 0 to delta you will be getting the final expression for the laminar film flow is pi d rho f tau delta square by 2 mu f where tau is the shear stress we have already derived. Similar thing can be done for turbulent flow. In case of turbulent flow it will be pi d rho f 0 to delta u f d y and here u f will be replaced by u f plus ok and d y will be replaced by d y plus at the same time your limit will be transforming from delta to delta plus ok. Already we have said what is uh, the relationship between y and y plus here delta plus will be delta into u tau into rho f by mu f ok. So, once you know the expression for this u f plus depending on which layer you are in you will be finding out the integration value and you can get the film flow rate for the turbulent regime ok. Next let us see some other uh, extent if uh, in the previous case we have shown the film was uh, moving up ok. So, let us say in this case we are uh, taking you are having a falling film. So, the film is actually falling down and the gas is moving up. So, in this case what we can do we can uh, typically find out similar figure ok whatever we have shown in the last one only thing is that this tau w is in the upward direction because the film is now falling down ok. Now, let us try to see that what happens for the gaseous velocities. So, if we obtain uh, if we if you consider that very low gas velocities then we can write down dp dz equals to minus rho g into g 
Okay. And in this case, if you are having very low gas velocity, you can assume that at the interface there is no shear stress. Okay. So, tau i is nearly equivalent to 0. Okay. So, this tau i is merely equivalent to 0 over here. Okay. So, if you apply the previous equation whatever we have derived over here for tau i and make this tau i is equals to 0, you will be getting something like this tau is equals to minus half into rho f minus rho g into g into r square minus r i square by r. Okay. Now, let us try to uh, uh, convert this one in easier forms. So, what we will be doing? We will be taking assumption that film thickness is very small compared to the pipe diameter. So, delta is less less than d. Under this assumption, we can write down r plus r i. So, r was the uh, arbitrary uh, cross sectional uh, radius and r i was the interfacial radius that will be more or less equivalent to 2 r because delta is very small. So, under this we can write down if you see over here r square minus r i square. So, that will be r plus r i multiplied by r minus r i. So, r plus r i we can write down as 2 r. So, that r and this r will be cancelling out finally, we will be getting minus rho f into minus rho g into g into r minus r i. Okay. Once again we can write down r minus r i is nearly equivalent to delta minus y. Remember y is being calculated from the wall. So, r minus r i will be delta minus y. So, what we can do r minus r i we can replace in terms of delta minus y and final expression for the following film will be coming as tau is equals to minus rho f minus rho g into g into delta minus y. Right? So, this is the shear stress expression for falling film flow. Next. Let us try to understand if this is laminar flow then what happens. In a typical fashion if we explain if we replace this tau as mu into del u f del y and once again integrate with respect to y then we will be getting u f is equals to minus g by mu f into rho f minus rho g and integration of this term delta minus y will be giving you delta y minus y square by 2. Okay. So, if you go further and try to find out the uh, 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 mass flow rate per unit width. So, gamma can be written as minus rho f 0 to delta u f into d y. Okay. So, this is the mass flow rate per unit uh, width. So, you can write down this u f as this function and once again integrate from 0 to delta, you will be finding out the final expression as rho f g into rho f minus rho g by mu f into delta cube by 3. So, you see the mass flow rate per unit width is actually dependent on the delta cube. Okay. Going in this fashion, what we can do? We can define a typical non-dimensional number which is called film Reynolds number. So, here we are defining film Reynolds number as R e gamma. Okay. So, R e gamma will be dependent on the film thickness. So, the length scale will be typically the film thickness. So, what we have done? We have defined the film Reynolds number as 4 delta u f rho f by mu f. Okay. So, once you get uh, the expression for this mass flow rate per unit width and you know u f already we have seen over here. So, if we plug the, both this u f and gamma over here, we can write down this film Reynolds number as a function of gamma and mu f only. Okay. So, we find out film Reynolds number will be nothing but 4 gamma by mu f, where gamma is the mass flow rate per unit width. Okay. Then we try to find out what is the non-dimensionless -dim film, film thickness or non-dimensional film thickness. So, that will be delta star and we can write down delta star as delta into g to the power 1 by 3 rho f minus rho g to the power 1 by 3 into rho f to the power 1 by 3 by mu f to the power 2 by 3. Okay. So, with this definition what we can find out we will be getting relationship between this delta star and R e gamma which is nothing but film Reynolds number and little bit of derivation between these two can be proving you that gamma delta star is becoming 3 by 4 R e gamma to the power 1 by 3. Please try to practice this one. This is not very difficult task. Only replacement of one term in the another one will be giving you the correct expression. So, we can find out that delta star for laminar film flow comes out to be 3 by 4 R e gamma to the power 1 by 3. So, if you do 3 by 4 to the power 1 by 3, so delta star typically becomes 0 0.909 R e gamma to the power 1 by 3. Follow the same procedure for turbulent layer, you will be getting some another expression. The expression comes out to be delta star is equals to 0 0.115 R e gamma to the power 
0.6 okay please practice this turbulent one it will be you will be getting the same expression okay next let us try to find out what happens for the friction factors so if you see two phase multiplier for fluid portion only okay so here phi f square we know that ftp two phase friction factor by ff fluid portion friction factor multiplied by u f square by j f square this we have uh, defined in the diflux chapter and then we, we know that j f can be written as 1 minus alpha into u f. So, I can replace this j f and u f in terms of 1 minus alpha. So, here you will be getting phi f square becomes 1 minus alpha whole square using this equation over here. So, we will be getting phi f square is 1 minus alpha whole square f t p by f f. Okay. Now, if we assume that delta is very thin, so the film thickness is very small compared to the pipe diameter, then I can write down that uh, the f uh, volume uh, for the film is pi d delta into u f. On the other hand, if you try to compare the superficial velocity of the film, the, the volume comes out to be pi by 4 d square into j f. So, if you equate this to then you will be getting a relationship between u f and j f in this fashion 4 delta u f is equals to d j f right. Little bit of uh, multiplication and division it will be giving you uh, 4 delta u f rho f by mu f is equals to d j f rho f by mu f. Now, these are nothing but your Reynolds number expression this is for two phase and this is for fluid portion only. So, we find out Reynolds number for two phase and Reynolds number for fluid portion only they are same assuming delta is very small than d. Okay. So, if Reynolds number are same obviously, uh, friction factors will be same. So, we can write down phi f square is equals to 1 by 1 minus alpha whole square from this equation if we cancel both this term considering the delta less less than d. Okay. Now, let us try to see the gas portion only. So, for the two phase you can write down across the interface minus del p del z friction factor is equals to 4 tau i by d minus 2 delta okay. and tau i can be written as this we have already explained earlier half f i rho g into u g minus u l square and for gas portion only del p del z friction factor for gas is nothing but 4 tau g by d and tau g will be half of f g into rho g into g g square. Now, if we plug all these things that means, uh, uh, this del p del z two phase friction factor, del p del z gas only friction factor, a uh, gas portion friction factor in the uh, two phase multiplier phi g square, then we will be finding out we are getting tau i by tau g root over of pi by 4 d square by pi by 4 d minus 2 delta whole square. Now, this gives me 1 by root alpha and tau i by tau g comes over here. So, we find out that uh, uh, two phase gas portion only friction factor is multiplied is actually tau i by tau g multiplied by 1 by root alpha. Now, let us try to find out how root alpha can be calculated. So, if you see and if we give this u j is equals to j g by alpha, then we can write down this tau i by tau j from here okay, over here like this considering no liquid velocity. So, in this expression you see here we are having u l. So, if you cancel this one, then we are getting half f i rho g u g square and this one is half f g rho g j g square. So, you will be finding out relationship between u g and j g in this fashion. So, if we put all this uh, tau i and uh, uh, tau g in this expression okay, with assumption of no liquid velocity, we will be finally leading to f i by f g into 1 by alpha to the power 5 by 2. Now, there are uh, several options uh, for this ratio of the friction factors. So, if we first assume that both the friction factors are same interficial friction factor and gas only friction factor, then we will be getting that uh, gas portion multiplier is nothing but 1 by alpha to the power 5, 5 by 2. Okay. Now, Wallis he has given another uh, opinion in place of this equal friction factor. He has given uh, that at for the wavy interface f i by f g is equals to 1 plus 75 into 1 minus alpha. If you hook into this f i by f g in this equation, then you will be getting phi g square is equals to 1 plus 75 into 1 minus alpha divided by alpha to the power 5 by 2. Right? So, let us summarize this lecture. So, in this lecture we have derived the expression for shear stress inside uh, liquid film in the annular flow 
Okay. We have formulated the uh, film velocity for both laminar and turbulent regime. Okay. Using falling film analysis, we have expressed the non-dimensional film thickness as a function of the film Reynolds number and at the end, we have calculated the friction factors okay, or two-phase multipliers for gas portion and liquid portion only as a function of your void fraction okay, for consideration of the annular flow. Right? So, this we have uh, summarized in this uh, lecture. Let us find out some uh, questions uh, to test our understanding. So, we are having three questions over here. First one, mention assumption for falling <laughs> film theory. So, we are having four uh, options over here, tau y nearly equals to 0, delta less less than d, rho f greater greater than rho g and finally, delta nearly equals to 0. So, I think all of you have got which one is the correct answer. So, you can get first one and second one tau y nearly equals to 0 and delta less less than d is actually the correct answer. Okay. Then this we have already discussed it during the derivation in this lecture. Okay. Then second question phi g whole square is nearly equal to 1 by alpha to the power 5 by 2 is valid for four options we are having low gas velocity, low relative velocity, zero liquid velocity and finally, downward liquid velocity answer is obvious for zero liquid velocity. So, without using zero liquid velocity u g minus u l whole square will not be converting to u g square and you cannot cancel these things. Okay. Then the third question for delta less less than d mention the correct relationships we are having Reynolds number for two phase equals to Reynolds number for fluid portion only, Reynolds number for two phase is equals to Reynolds number for gas phase only, Reynolds number for two phase equals to Reynolds number of fluid portion, Reynolds number of two phase is equals to Reynolds number of gas portion. Okay. Obviously, the answer is part A Reynolds number of two phase is equals to Reynolds number of fluid portion. Okay. So, uh, with this we will be concluding this lecture, thank you.